Bonjour, marhaba, hello, welcome, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests. My name is Jack Dutton, Chief Business Correspondent, our monitor, and we're now going to begin our panel on raising the game, mastering mega events in the GCC from a sports perspective. The sports market in the GCC has evolved in recent years at an electrifying pace. We've seen investment from the golf across the board, whether that's football, tennis, mixed martial arts, boxing, golf, just to name a few. The FIFA 2022 World Cup in Qatar was a significant example of major sports event taking place in the Gulf, which has gone on to transform the economy of the country and leave a lasting legacy. Countries in the GCC are looking to transform their economies and diversify um, from a reliance on oil and uh, have very young population. More than 50% of the Middle East population are 25 and under. So sports are the obvious avenue to invest in. Some of the world's top sporting talent uh, in the last few years have been uh, lured to the Gulf, including uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, Karim Benzema, Brazilian forward Neymar in the Saudi Pro League. And Gulf entities have heavily invested in international football clubs too, including Manchester City, Newcastle United, Paris Saint-Germain. But let's uh, not talk about Mbappe. Now, looking ahead, how can the Gulf countries and businesses draw on European experience and expertise when it comes to hosting large sports events? with Saudi Arabia hosting the 2029 Asian Olympics in Trajana and the 2030 World Cup, for example. Looking forward to continuing the discussion with our panel of esteemed experts. Now, without further ado, I'll allow each panel to introduce themselves briefly and outline their work in sports events in the Gulf. Uh, we'll start with uh, jean Julien and go left. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jack. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, just um, just a quick word. I'm, uh, I'm Jean-Guillaume Lacoste. I'm the CEO of uh, Gel Events in the Middle East and Africa. Gel Events is, uh, is a French company, world, world player in the event industry with um, a very strong background in the sport industry as well. We are um, on three pillars on the event industry and certainly having a, a unique uh, service providing channel on the on the sport and the event industry, providing service for major events. We will be certainly one of the biggest service providers of the Olympics, like we were for the uh, for the World Cup in Qatar. We are providing services for events, conference, and everything. We are venue manager, and we do manage venues all over the world now in in uh, 20 countries. And last but not least, we are also organizer of an exhibition. So um, I will talk specifically on sport today, but this is just a small part of the activity that we have. Thank you, Jack. Uh, I'll introduce myself. This is Mohamed El Marzouk from Kuwait, uh, the CEO of uh, Temdin Group uh, Investment. I'll just give you a brief of Temdin Group. Temdin Group is a based company in Kuwait. Its core business is uh, real estate uh, development. But it's interesting, the past four years, we went into the sports industry with the partnership of uh, the government sector and the uh, private sector. Uh, basically, we, we, we have a, a couple of uh, subsidiary companies in uh, entertainment and in, in, in sports and investment. We're the biggest uh, Cinescape uh, theater in Kuwait. And not only that, uh, even uh, um, in, 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 in kids' activities also. Uh, our base is, is, like I said, it's, it's the um, uh, real estate uh, development, which is malls and everything. But uh, on a later on stage, I'll, I'll speak about the sports sector also. Thank you. Yes. Hi, everyone. So, yeah, my name is Fanuel. So I'm the CEO and uh, founder of uh, Tenum Consulting. Um, we are based in Dubai since 15 years, so since 2009 and uh, know well the GCC, including uh, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, and Qatar, Kuwait, Oman. Um, we have helped more than 3,000 uh, companies to establish their business in the Middle East. Uh, on top of that, Talium Group, uh, our main uh, company, invested in uh, sports. Uh, so we have uh, um, di we did the acquisition of key players in the in the GCC uh, who provide like sports, uh, like mainly into uh, academies, uh, multi sports. Of course, uh, we are talking about football, basketball, and and all type of sports. And uh, we'll be happy to discuss uh, this with you. 
Bonjour à tous. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Business France, for having um, an SME such as Group F um, on the floor today. It's quite an honor for us, and I'm delighted to welcome also our esteemed guests from the Middle East, as um, I'm quite used to uh, go and meet you at, uh, in your country. So it's uh, a pleasure for me to welcome you here in France, and I hope that you will enjoy Paris. Uh, that said, so I'm the Deputy Managing Director of Group F, um, quite a small group of people, about 50 people, um, designing, producing and delivering large-scale events such as fireworks, drones, so we are related to the sports industry and the mega events in the Middle East when we speak about sports. Our history began in the, in the early 90s with the Barcelona, Barcelona Olympic Games and then we delivered also the FIFA World Cup in Paris in 90. Eight. Um, and from time to time, we had the opportunity to, uh, to be involved in the Torino Olympic Games, also Athens, and then Rio de Janeiro also. So you will maybe see us in a few weeks from now, maybe. <laughs> um, and in the Middle East, we have been uh, involved in a lot of events since the very beginning of the 2000 years, um, such as the World Cup in Maidan, the, the Asian Games in Doha, uh, the, some football events in Kuwait, we have been honored to inaugurate the Jabbar al Ahmad Stadium back in the time. Uh, so we are involved in a lot of events and I will speak about the legacy part of the mega events. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Fabrice favet -Dubon. I'm the general manager for On Location here in France. Um, thanks for having me and uh, thanks for uh, Business France for having gathered su such a distinguished audience. I'm very happy to be here. W what is On Location? Um, on Location is um, a, a pure PL player specialized in uh, hospitality in sport. So uh, we are one of the largest uh, um, uh, hospitality uh, provider uh, in the world, um, whether it's uh, on fully owned event uh, or uh, event that we operate in terms of hospitality, combining the best of uh, the, um, all the different sport tickets with the best of hospitality experiences. And um, uh, I'm very lucky to uh, oversee the, the Paris 24 uh, operations uh, in France as uh, on location is the official hospitality provider for the next three uh, Olympic Games, uh, Paris 24, Milan, Milan Cortina uh, 26 and uh, LA 28. Thank you. So uh, let's... Uh kick off uh, the discussion, I guess. And um, I guess, uh, Fabrice, with On Location, um, it would be good to start to uh, talk to you. We're obviously in Paris. It's one of the sporting capitals of the world. Uh, we've got the Olympics coming up on July 26th. Um, and uh, it'd be interesting to know from your perspective what lessons have been learned and can be learned from putting on these large sports events in France and in Europe and how that can be applied to putting on events in the Gulf. Yeah, I'm not a Gulf uh, region expert, but um, I, I can share and more, I'm very more than happy to share uh, what could be our key learnings and what could be the approach um, uh, regarding um, a projection to the Gulf region because uh, um, what we've tried to, to, to do uh, regarding the Paris 24 uh, games is to really combine the best, um, the best of the uh, US sportainment uh, skills, uh, the best of the DNA of the event, because uh, On Location is not very famous as a brand, but it's normal because we partner with the biggest sports brands in the world, uh, like the Super Bowl, the Ryder Cup, uh, and now the Olympic Games. And so we take the best of uh, what we can do, the best of the DNA of an event, and the best of uh, the local uh, the local expertise, and as far as the 
PICE 24 games are, are concerned, uh, we relied on the best of the uh, French uh, savoir-vivre, the best of the French culture, building on the patrimony. Uh, just to give you an example, um, uh, you can imagine a, a sunrise at the first floor of the Eiff Eiffel Tower uh, and enjoy it, and then just after that, uh, going to attend the, the, a game, uh, a beach volley game, uh, just below the Eiffel Tower, uh, being at the front row. So that's wh what we can do, and it's really the kind of approach combining the best of, uh, uh, let's say, an international experience with the best of the local, um, uh, local patrimony and local knowledge. It's all about localization. Uh, we've created uh, the, the French subsidiary as a, as a gateway to our, to our Europe operations, but we are more than 600 now. Uh, combining the best of the three uh, uh, cultures. Thanks. And uh, Nic uh, Nicolas, it'd be good to learn a little bit more about um, uh, Group F and the work you've been doing with Qatar and the experience um, the company has had there doing business in the region. Yeah, we have been um, involved in a lot of events in Qatar since the Asian Games in 2009, I think, 2010. Um, and then since then, we have been involved in other uh, sports events in Qatar, the last one being the FIFA 2022, of course. Um, I will say that the, from our experience, from back in the days, the sports ceremonies was held, uh, were held sorry, in, uh, in stadiums, and now they try to, uh, and we always try to uh, design the ceremonies and the, the legacy events within the city, within the community, to leave uh, a footprint, to leave memories, and to leave something uh, strong, stronger than it, if it was just a stadium event itself. So we can rela relate it to the, to the Seine opening ceremony, of course, in a few weeks in Paris. But, uh, for example, when we did the grand opening of the Qatar ceremony in 2022, we did a huge event in the Bay of Doha, uh, showcasing the area itself, the city, and proposing a show open to everyone, which was the, the goal, the ultimate goal for the FIFA 22 opening ceremony. It was to propose something for the Qatari people and the local people, and at the same time, we also held the ceremony, the classic ceremony at the stadium, the Albaid Stadium, for the first game. And it was quite a challenge for us, yes. And uh, Jean-Julien, um, it'd be good to know from your perspective how European actors in the value chain have been helping golf partners putting on sporting events. And there's obviously been a lot of discussion about female empowerment in the region, uh, particularly uh, there was discussion, I remember, on the panel yesterday in Saudi Arabia, and how is that changing the sports industry? It definitely changed it a lot, and, and this, is, this is a point, but if I can jump, jump on the, um, the, the, the previous point, um, on the learning that we, we have seen on major sports events uh, worldwide, we, um, we have the chance in, in France to host not only the Olympics, but every year we, we are hosting the Tour de France, we are hosting Roland Garros these days, we are both are some of the most important sports events. So we have, uh, we have a, a strong knowledge and um, the learning that golf country can learn from this major event that France is organizing is, is, is of different type. Domestically, it's very important because all these major events bring new infrastructure and, and develop, I mean, certainly faster the development of an, uh, of an economy, of a domestic economy. And it's very important for a country to de develop the infrastructure. It can be the road, it can be the stadium, but it can be many things that be, will be very important. It develop also, and uh, that's your point, um, the opportunity for the people living in a country to um, to practice sport, and that's crucial. Um, we will see that, certainly after the Olympics in Paris, we will see all the licenses that will increase in some of the federation, federation, sport federation, certainly the one who will have more success, but it's, it brings the opportunity for a country when they host a major event to develop sport practice, and this is crucial. Your point definitely 
We can see that in, in many Gulf countries, um, the development and sport activities, we will talk certainly about the academy, um, for, the, for the women specifically, that gives them the opportunity to, to emancipate um, in, in the country. So sports and hosting a major sport event is very important. Internationally, internationally it's also very important to shine on the, um, on the world wide map, and that's weird very often talking about uh, the, um, uh, um, I mean, soft power on what the sport can bring. And it's, it's, it's very important that to shine and to exist on, a, on, on the world wide map. And last but not least, on, on the economic side, and, and we can be, we, we learn a lot uh, as, as French company on hosting the, uh, the, the major events and the major sport events. When you look at the, the global value chain of the sport economy, we are key players in France on every single part of this value chain that we learn by hosting this major event. You talk about uh, engineering, you talk about architects, construction company, um, design, you have an uh, organizing company, and not only j events, but all the uh, really key player organizing ceremony, um, but you can talk also on tourism, hotel, transport, everything, and, and all together, we can be proud to offer these kind of services to any country hosting a major event in the future. That's a, one of the key points and certainly one of the key uh, cross uh, work and business that we can do, French company with Gulf company in the future. Yes, and um, as you've seen, more Gulf countries holding sports events, whether that's uh, the UAE with Abu Dhabi holding, being the new kind of but sorry, for the last 13 years being a, a home of Formula One or you've seen with the Super Cups in Saudi. Uh, it would be good to learn a little bit about the legacy and the economic development angle. And for instance, um, it would be good to understand from yourself, Nico, what have been some of the lasting impacts of holding large events in the Gulf um, and the impact on the economy, such as the Qatar World Cup? Yeah, I think we can, uh, we can have a look to two different types of uh, milestones. Uh, the FIFA World Cup and uh, the, the Asian Games and uh, the Olympic Games are milestones that we can, we can anticipate and we can organize quite a long time ahead of that. Um, from our experience at Group F, we can see that within, for example, Saudi Arabia, um, we are involved now in a lot of sports events and e-games sports events, uh, e-sports events. Um, for which the time frame available before the event itself is quite reduced. It's not last minute, but it's uncertain until a long time, uh, too long, so from time to time for us. So to leave a legacy for the event itself, we need to be agile and to be able to anticipate and to be able to uh, project the equipment and the human resources we need um, on time. That's why we have developed uh, two local branches, one in Dubai and one in Riyadh, to be able to uh, address the request for each event. When we have a Super Cup in Saudi Arabia, we don't know it, we don't know the, if the event will be confirmed maybe, let's say, four weeks before, which is nothing for us. <laughs> because we have to imagine that we have to transport dangerous goods such as explosives, drones, batteries, and things like that. So four weeks is a huge challenge for us. So we are team players, we, but we need to anticipate at some point. Thanks. And um, moving on uh, to Kuwait, uh, Mohammed, obviously uh, your work is based there and you've been very involved with tennis and tennis academies uh, with uh, Rafael Nadal. Um, it would be great to hear more about your experience and what that's been like and how the private sector is working with the public sector over there um, to organize sports events. Um, Jack, it's true. I mean, uh, talking about this subject, um, it's a collaboration between the private sector and the government sector, which is, in is interesting. We never thought that uh, we're going to be having a partnership with the, with the, with the government sector, basically. Um, the Kuwait Tennis Federation approached us and uh, uh, gave us an opportunity to, to, to invest in this kind of uh, investment. Uh, the investment is basically uh, a huge project, which is between 600 to 700 million dollars. Um, it consists of uh, four entities, basically. The main uh, entity is the Rafa Nadal Academy. Uh, the second is the mall itself, uh, and uh, the hotel is the third, 
And the fourth is the, is the arena. It's a multi-purpose uh, indoor arena that carries 5,000 seats. What's uh, interesting is the Rafa Nadal Academy, is that we got to, 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 to get to know some French companies consulting that uh, really helped us in approaching the Rafa Nadal Academy. And having that itself uh, gave us a, a push uh, connecting with the French companies uh, and uh, not only that, even with the government sector, we, they got to know uh, these kind of companies. And uh, with having the, the Rafa Nadal Academy in Kuwait, it gave us uh, a lot of sustainability having, you know, the young kids uh, approaching this kind of sports. And uh, not only that, also uh, having some tournaments also, you know. Uh, in Kuwait, we didn't have this kind of huge uh, excitement of uh, tournaments, uh, maybe in other sports, but in tennis, with having the Rafa Nadal methodology and the coaches, I think it gave us uh, a big push in the sports uh, sector. And what other sports um, can you see uh, rising a lot in popularity in Kuwait as I, well? I mean, I mean, the number one sports is football, basically, yeah. <laughs> in, in Kuwait, you know. Uh, uh, not only that, I mean, uh, what you said uh, in the beginning is ha having having uh, the GCC with the Formula One, you know, with 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 all the uh, Saudi Arabia with the with the football, you know, it will complement all these kind of sports, uh, entertainment and uh, tournaments all around uh, the GCC. And it'd be good to know a little bit more about how the academy plays a role in developing talent and. Um, retaining talent, if you like, and contributing to the growth of the sports industry in Kuwait? I mean, who doesn't want Rafa Nadal in some country, you know? <laughs> he, I mean, uh, having his uh, methodology, his uh, principles, you know, it, it, it pushes and boosts the kids to, 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 I mean, to implement these things. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, we have a uh, junior program, which is 300 uh, kids, you know, uh, we've been investing in these kids to participate in tournaments outside. Uh, the, the, the French consultant company is, we're dealing with is, is helping us to, to, to have uh, a I mean, relationship with other academies in France, you know. Uh, so, so it gives us a big push on this kind of uh, thoughts. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Fanuel, with your um, experience uh, setting up the Paris Saint-Germain Academy in the UAE, it would be great to hear how that experience has been and how that's developed over the years. Yeah, so <clears throat> first of all, um, I think this is important to understand, like when we are talking about academies, we are talking about the youth, you are talking about the so children from the age of four years old up to 16 and even 20 years old sometimes, depending on the program and depending on, on uh, which school or university we are working. Because, for example, in the UAE, and now, as you know, we are expanding now, in, we are starting in September in Saudi, and soon in Jordan, and also we are looking for Bahrain and Oman, because we have the master franchise for the old GCC. We are already running in Kuwait and Qatar, under Paris Saint-Germain uh, uh, Academy brands, which is very successful, and in the UAE since uh, 2022, September. So of course we had we had a big push because of, thanks to the the World Cup, but we realized that there is a gap in the market in the GCC and and in in the UAE and now as I'm traveling often in Saudi we find the same situation in Saudi also. Um, so we like. Okay, I've born and raised in Paris, so I play football when I was young and stuff. And we understand and we play football like any, like every time, everywhere. And, the, and we are talking about football because, of course, it's the main like topics. And as you said, like the main sport now, any kids you talk to, any kids, of course, they're interesting by playing football. But in the, I think in the Middle East, there is into the school. We we are really working now with the Ministry of uh, Education, and because we want to integrate. Uh, this how do you call um, this idea of sports in France? We have we, every, everybody knows uh, the sportitude, like sport and studies. This concept uh, doesn't exist yet in the in the GCC, and we are working with the authorities to implement uh, this uh, initiative of integrating. So it can be tennis, by the way, with the of course uh, brands or the football, but also the basketball. Uh, you see recently Abu Dhabi has the NBA also uh, things 
uh, we bring the Paris Saint-Germain, but other uh, brands are there, like Juventus, Barcelona, all your major uh, uh, football club, European football club. So for us, as a, how do you call, as a French company based in the UAE since 15 years, it's a great privilege and honor to bring this and to work with partners and of the GCC countries. Uh, yeah, to what do you call to to educate and to integrate like a, um, a system into the education from the young age uh, with the football, but also other sports. Yeah, and Vanuel, you've you've seen um, a huge investment in esports as well with the Saudi uh, Kidia pro mega project in Riyadh and Abu Dhabi's esports island, and. Uh, as I said earlier, the Middle East has a very, very young population. More than half of the population is 25 and under. What uh, developments are you seeing in esports, and are you quite uh, bullish about the growth of this sector in the Gulf? Um, for, for the esport, for sure, we have. I mean, based on our experience, we have a lot, a lot of people who are now. I mean, a lot of kids, like children, this huge generation who are playing football or any other sports, they are, of course, all having like PlayStation and Xbox and stuff like that. So, of course, they want to... We, we have organized a couple of uh, uh, competition, like friendly competition. Uh, um, just to give you some numbers, for the past years, we have more than 10,000 kids who run our programs, it's not only football, once again, which is sport, so swimming, basketball, tennis, and, and so. And of course, when we organize events, and I will be happy to discuss these events with the, with the partners and to organize events, why not, in the UAE or in Saudi, that we are opening soon, and, and of course in France. Um, of course, the, 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 there is a real interest of esports, and there is a huge, uh, how do you call, uh, opportunity for, for the esports uh, in the region. And um, what is your experience um, working on uh, different events for esports, Nico? Yeah, for sure, we see the growing and uh, the fast growing of esports events in the Middle East and especially in Saudi Arabia, where we are involved in uh, the Gamers 8, for example, events each summer in Riyadh. Um, and from our experience, what we see is that we have to develop. Uh, events and activation ceremonies and communication acts, especially designed for that kind of events. If you take the example of a football cup, you will have to design a ceremony within the stadium area uh, so that you can get the, the postcard of the team winning the cup at the end of the, the match. For any games events, that the story is a little bit different, and you have to imagine the event within the premises itself. For Riyadh, for example, we work at the boulevard uh, the, uh, developed area. So we have to, uh, to design and produce an event within the area itself. So we have to, uh, to fit with the event, and we have to offer the possibility of, to the people to communicate about their event online. Because we are not talking only to the people on site, that they are part of the event, but we have to talk globally to the world itself. So we have to imagine the way to communicate the, itself, the, the event itself live the, uh, in a good way. Thanks. And um, Jean, uh, Julien, come back to you. Um, it would be interesting to talk about what uh, kind of, uh, what the profile, the typical profile of Middle Eastern clients you're working with when it comes to sports events and what um, sort of packages, be it hospitality or sports packages, are golf clients opting for when they come to these events? And um, I guess what are the wider consumer trends you're seeing from the region? Um, I will I will distinguish the uh, maybe Saudi Arabia with the rest of the um, the other countries, even within with the UAE. Um, we we are I mean we are the, the the global thing that we we are seeing in the um, in the in the GCC is for the moment all the major events are I mean are financed by government. Um, we are not yet in a principle where the finance will come with um, with the ticketing, with the sponsoring, with the the TV rights. For the moment, um, the government they decide to host, and so they will have um, they will bid to host the major sports events. That means that at the end of the day, um, one of the philosophy behind that is hosting. I was talking about the. Um, 
the uh, the the shining on the uh, on the world map this is critical for them and that's very important and it's also uh, very important and that's why i made the difference between saudi and and the rest of the um, the gcc is very important when you have a population of, of uh, 60 to 70% of young people in your country to bring entertainment and sport is, is part of the entertainment. You, so your young generation that will use sport and entertainment in general, as well as um, a way to exist on the social network. There's a, a big, big, big link between what's happening now in the social networks and the sport event and the event in general are very crucial in, on the social network. You, you're showing um, the video on the photo of what you're doing. So that's, that's important and that's the way you get uh, certainly sponsoring of some key people. You're mentioning Cristiano Ronaldo, but if, uh, if uh, certainly Saudi has paid something which can be considered that a huge amount is, is, is I would say, not peanuts, but it's, it's not big comparing to the major worldwide campaign that they have done, having Cristiano Ronaldo. And for 200 million euros, they certainly they did one of the best campaigns that they have done worldwide to, I mean, to, 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 to talk about the Saudi. And it's, it's gonna be something like that. So you want to host a major event uh, in, the, in the way that at the end of the day, it will entertain your, your population and give them the, also the opportunity to exist on the social network and making shine and they will have a win-win uh, thing on that. Coming to the, to the hospitality, maybe uh, um, Fabricio will be better than me on <laughs> discussing on the, <laughs> on the hospitality package. But then you will have the very important package that we have seen. We are working on the Saudi Cup, for instance, on uh, getting the, uh, the, um, the, the population hosting. But it's also important to give the opportunity to the global public to attend. Um, and we have seen more and more people attending uh, every kind of game or sport games. It can be the Formula One, the tennis or whatever. That means they want to be part of this excitement because they will, and I was mentioned before, they will practice this sport and they will be part of the ecosystem of a sport. So it's important that uh, the development goes also with the population that you have uh, in, in, in every country. Thanks. Did you want to weigh in at all, Fabrice? <laughs> Yes, just before answering your question regarding hospitality, maybe one additional comment regarding what you just said, Jean-Guillaume. Um, basically, what we do in hospitality is creating emotions. Uh, I don't remember who said exactly something like people will not remember what you said, we will not remember what you did, but they will remember uh, what you made them feel, okay? So that's basically what we, what we do. And, and now we've been experiencing the fact that uh, the social recognition is part of the experience. And just to give you an example, uh, you all know about uh, photo booth experience uh, that are included in uh, most of the hospitality experience and for the, the games this, uh, this summer, for the very first time, um, this ex photo experience would be, uh, let's say, powered by AI, uh, allowing our guests to be able to share on their social networks uh, as soon as possible, uh, let's say, the, the official party with their with, with their friends and and because it's part of the of the experience but coming back to your question um, we have a lot of clients uh, in, uh, in in the gulf region uh, mainly ultra networks individuals not companies uh, individuals uh, looking for um, exclusivity and, uh, and private experience. Uh, so that's what we do also um, for the, the highest segment for our clients, being able to uh, welcome them uh, at the arrival uh, uh, at the airport, taking care of them during 24-7 yeah, and then, uh, and then uh, accompanying them uh, uh, to the departure of the flight. Thanks. Well, uh, I think we're uh, running out of time, but um, that was a great discussion. I want to thank the panel for the engaging discussion, Business France for organizing the event, and all of you for participating. Thank you.